It's the weekend again, and that means it's time to tackle the assembly of another subsystem of the printer that I've been designing that I'm calling R1. Today, we're going to be looking at the XY gantry, which is built upon this cast aluminum tooling plate. And I've already got all the parts ready to go, so let's jump right into opening all these bags up and take you along for the ride. So this is the tooling plate that forms the main reference surface for the XY gantry. It was cut on a water jet of a piece of cast aluminum tooling plate, and I've used the manual mill to add some additional features, like these bearing boards here, and also some precision reamed dowel pin holes, which I'll be using to align some of the critical rails. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert all of the bearings into the various plates. These are bearings that I've repacked with red and tacky grease. Now I'm pressing in these dowel pins into these reamed holes in the frame. And I'll be using these as alignment features when I install the linear rails. So, now I can take a linear rail, push it up against these features, and then we'll be using these steel backing plates to pass bolts through the linear rail and into the back side of the plate. And this is fastened with M3 by 16 millimeter screws. So I'm gonna start with two. So now I've got all the rails lightly installed, and now we're going to slowly tighten them down. First, these rails against the pins, and these will be our kind of reference rails, and then these ones we will leave floating until we install the cross gantry, and then we'll tighten everything down to make sure there's no racking of the gantry. So I'm just pushing it against the dowel pins right now to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. And now likewise for this reference axis, we can also go ahead and add the rest of the screws in. Now I'm going to install the end stops of the rails, which are these little threaded pins. So I'm going to take a little quick break to put together the belt tensioner assembly. So I basically created a loop of belt and then installed it in the actual belt tensioner, which is this little block here. And so by tightening the screw, we can move the two ends of the belt closer together. I'm going to start by picking out the uh, main side of the tensioner and then I'll take my belt and we just need to press the belt into the tensioner like that. Using the other one as a guide, I can figure out how long I need to make this belt. So I found the point where I need to cut. I'm going to go in with my scissors. And so now this end of the belt goes in the free end of the tensioner. I'm not pushing it. So I can take a tensioner and then pass that bolt in and thread it into the other side. Now it's time to build up the belt towers that will mount the cross rail to these other linear rails and will also hold the belt tensioner assemblies that we just put together. Let's start with the cross rail that runs like this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put two of these plates that contain press fit pen nuts onto each of these rail carriages like that. Then we are going to put these two blocks, which hold the actual cross rail, on top. And now one of these cross rails needs to go in these blocks. So we can start by pressing it in. And that then goes just like that. The next step will be to put two of these spacer plates into the stack. And finally, we can put in two of the belt tensioners that we just put together. Finally, we will top it off with another set of the spacer plates. And now we'll be using M3 by 25 millimeter button head cap screws to bolt these assemblies all the way through. And these will screw directly into the linear rail below. So now I'm going in and I'm tightening up 
the belt tower that's on our reference rail. There's also a little set screw right here that we use to tighten against the cross rail. So I'll tighten that down as well. So now that this side is tightened down, we're going to slide this rail against the end stops that have been added to the plate. And since the end stops are these precision references, we can now tighten up this other belt tower and we can be confident that the cross rail is perpendicular to the axis that we're working with. Now that both towers are tight, we can begin to actually tighten the rail down and kind of move this back and forth gradually as we do it to make sure that there's no binding. So this rail is pretty much all the way tightened down now. I am gonna go back in and add some Loctite to all of these bolts. But what we can see is that there are no spots where the rail is binding and the entire axis feels very smooth. So now we just have to repeat that for the other axis going in the other direction. These towers are built up in a slightly different order. And so we're going to start with the same base plate that has the PEM inserts. And then in this case, the belt tensioner assembly is the first thing that goes on. That's followed up by one of the spacer plates. And then we put our cross rail block on, like this, facing upward. Same thing on the other side. And so now we can take the last cross rail, and this cross rail will actually be mounted in this block with the carriage facing down. And like before, we'll be using the 25 millimeter screws to hold these assemblies together. And then, like before, we're going to push it up against the end stop. And then, with it pressed up against, we can go in and tighten. Here we go. And now we'll go in and start tightening the rails, just like last time. So now we're going to mount the motors to these little motor mounting plates. The motors just come in from above. Use some M3 by 6 bolts to fix it to the plate. So now we can take our gantry and flip it upside down. Just like that. And now we can actually take these motors and drop them right into the first bearing slot. And now we'll use some M3 by 10 millimeter screws to secure it to the plate. So hopefully you can begin to see how this is gonna work. Essentially all the belts kind of will wrap around either one of the motors or one of the live idler shafts, which will go in these other four corner bearings. Speaking of which, here are those live idler shafts. And so now we will get started with attaching pulleys to these and using spacers to properly align them on the shafts. So now I've prepared all of the idler shafts. The only difference is that on some of these, the shaft extends ever so slightly more than on the others. So starting out in this corner, the motor shaft will receive two washers, which will act as a two millimeter spacer. And then we will slide on a pulley like that. In the other corner, we take our idler. And this is a custom shaft spacer that I printed out and that will go here and this belt will go around that pulley. In this corner we use two washers on the live idler and the belt will then go around this pulley. This is as far as we're going to get in this video. When we actually integrate this with the rest of the printer, we'll have these little 
additional plates right here that have two bearings each, and those will kind of go in each corner like this and uh, hold the entire thing to the frame and also support it more. So stay tuned for some of the next videos because we're going to integrate some of these assemblies onto the actual printer frame, and that's going to be a really exciting milestone for this project. All right, thanks. See ya.